What is good guys, I'm here with OST round 4, Pokegame vs FLCL, this is a best of 3, so whoever wins 2 games moves on to round 5 OST. Some of you guys might already know the result, this game has been played a few days ago, unfortunately I wasn't able to record it live for you. So we see Pokegame brings this um, Cofagrius, I would say bulky offense or offense, yeah it's probably bulky offense. and. I assume this is Trick Room, and I, I know he has used the Z-Move Coferis in um, SPL. I haven't seen his SPL game, but I skipped through it. Like, I haven't seen it live, I just skipped through the replay. And yeah, that set is really cool with Nasty Plot, I think it's Trick Room and uh, Z Shadow Ball. And Alphaseal brings a also bulky offense team, because he has that Tangro Scissor Core going on in the back, and the Landers to check some stuff and get rocks. I mean, also, Mara could be a potential rocker. And then he has that offense, Greninja and Lele and Merrick. I mean, Merrick is super slow, but it's an offensive threat nonetheless. So we will just get right into game one as FLCL leads with a uh, scissor. So a lot of Greninjas run HP fire, which uh, I, I assume Pokemon lots of HP fire. So FLCL doesn't really have a good switch into HP fire scissor. I guess he could go into a Solvest Tangros and then. Maybe scout for Gangshot the next turn, but yeah, okay, he just goes into his own Greninja. Uh, we see the HP fires revealed, and we see that FLCL goes for U turn and is faster. So I assume FLCL is a Scarf Greninja since I saw Poig and I think Zamrock also used a team made by NJNP with that Scarf Greninja with U turn, Rock Slides, Bikes, and I forgot the last move, but I'm pretty sure he might be that set. As the thing is, what does he even u turn out into? He doesn't have much. I assume Tangros, yeah. So this is gonna. So Aim is just gonna throw up a spike here. I don't really know what Aim predicted there. Because, like, if, if FLCL had Hydro Pump on his Greninja, spiking there was a bit risky in, if Aim won the speed there. But maybe he knew the team and he knew what Scarf Ninja, I'm not sure. Uh, I guess Aim just knew he could live any hit, probably. Like, uh, if he wanted Speeder, he wouldn't have left this, obviously. So, FLCL ha will probably go for off cookie, predicting a potential gunk shot. But Aim just goes for spikes again, so off cook doesn't kill the Greninja, obviously. And we also see, um. Did we see live up on Aim's Greninja? I didn't pay attention. We didn't see live orb, so maybe he's expert build. That's, uh, like, a set that Flynn Victini has been used has been using so you don't get worn down. So I just brings in his Changros, I assume we'll see a knockoff from F okay we see a Giga from FLCL. And yeah M just knocks off I think they're trade knockoffs here. So they both have a fall by Stangrove, which is pretty common at the moment. It's just really nice to check stuff like Coco. Um Scarf Ganger that is locked into Shadow Ball. As FLCL catches aim there goes for the Giga Drain. Not too sure what aim was predicting there. Um, maybe Aim was predicting FLCL to go into Scissor there, because most Tangros won HP ice over HP fire, so Scissor was pretty free there, besides the fact that he would have taken hazards. So I assume he was predicting Scissor slash Landris there, not too sure. So now we see um, Aim bring out his Mega Mo his Mobile and Mega Evolve, and now you guys will see something which is remembers, um, or reminds me of Pokemon's SPL games. He goes for Player of Year, and you guys will see he misses. So this is really annoying for AIM, and I think FLCL just goes for off, gets good damage, and I think AIM just misses another player of here, so, and I'm pretty sure he will just say in the chat really soon that, I think he said even in the chat that he was super mad, like, that is, is this SPL, yeah, I didn't, nah, he didn't say super mad, is this SPL, is what he said, yeah. And yeah, he finally hits the third player, so this Tangos would have gone to it, killed, but yeah, Tangos is still alive, so, and the moral is dead now, this is bad for him, but he can bring in his Cofagrius, he has set up a Trick Room. And with the Spikes, um, he, will, he can bring a lot of pressure on FLCL, but I guess he decides to bring out the Landris first. So, I assume he wants to get up his Rocks first, so he weakens um, FLCL's team even more, and then he can sweep with the Corfag maybe. I assume that's his game plan here. As we see Giga Ren, it's not HP Ice, or he, didn't, or he just wanted to get some health back. So he's SD, I think he's gonna go for HP Ice now. Okay, no, just kick it in again, my bad. So he must be HP fire or something. Because I think he would have gone for HPS there if you have it. That Stone Edge didn't do much. 
Is that defensive line with SD? I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it's just Jolly Landris. Probably Mineral or something. As A misses another Stone Edge, he missed two players and now he missed the Stone Edge. I guess it's. I don't know if the Stone Edge mids really matter, but the, the player of misses early was so annoying. So now that he has all his hazards up, I think he brings out his Cofagria, sets up the Trick Room. Oh, he sets up a Nasty Pass first. As we see, Ethelcel go for a knockoff, so Tangus gets a mummy, loses the regenerator. And he also, um, we also see that Aim has a Z move, like I said earlier, because, like, we don't see an item getting knocked off. I think he goes to Trick Room or Nasty Plot. Yeah, Nasty Plot first, Trick Room the next turn. So this way he has more Trick Room turns to abuse. The other end doesn't do that much. I assume he's max HP. Kofag with max special attack, and he gets the Trick Room off, and Shadow Ball is just gonna blow this Tangus away since he knocked off the Assault Vest. And now FLCL just has to set months until the trick room runs out. I'm pretty sure Aim just goes for the, the Z-move here to blow the scissor away. To be 100% sure that the scissor dies. Which is really cool. Love this animation. Never ending nightmare. In case FLCL was a spit death scissor, maybe Shadow Ball wouldn't have killed. So I can understand going for Z-move. Landris will obviously just drop. He has two more turns of trick room, so he will get two more kills with this. Oh, he might even get three kills if he can live another hit. As FLCL decides to sack off the Marowak. And I'm pretty sure AIM still wins this besides the Hex, which is pretty nice to see. FLCL brings in Tapu Lele and Psychic will probably be able, or Psychic will be able to pick this off. Yeah, Psychic. And now AIM can just win with Scarf and Hilligo. He clicks, I assume, Sludge Rift twice and wins this game. So AIM is up 1 0. I'm gonna pause it real quick and we will be right back with uh, game two. I mean, no, 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 I bet. We, we will see now that it's Scarf Ninja from FLCL's part. So FLCL's win condition is basically Rock Slide Flinch and everything. But yeah, he doesn't get the Rock Slide Flinch and AIM is able to. Um, I think Twit KO. Okay, he gets a crit there, so he's able to kill the Good Ninja, but they added some justice for him. I mean, he wouldn't, he would have won this e either way, even if that didn't kill. Like, FLCL would have get to would have to get so many flinches in order to come back. So let me pause it and be right back with game two. Here we are with game two. I actually haven't seen this replay. I know um the team FLCL brought it's the anti pack scissor team that's um uh, RMT, I might link this in the description if you guys want to test this team yourself. Uh, most of you guys will obviously know this team because it has been used in SPL multiple times. It also like just in general if you are active in the forum, so in the small gun community, we will probably know about this team. So, this team is um, SDZ fighting move Tapu Bulu with um, Z all out pummeling. It's um, Stealth Rocks Landers with HP Ice, standard defensive Lando, Subcore Zygarde. I think it has Toxic. A Scar feature and with. Um, I saw a Flame Victini face Scar feature with HP Ice, but I think the original version doesn't have HP Ice. It has like Fire Blast and Flamethrower and Flash Cannon and Off Power, I think. So we have Mega Scissor here, which has Defog to support the team. Toxic Packs, just um, really common in this meta. Checks a lot of the meta. And it's a really, really annoying amount. We see Aim bring the exact same team, if I recall. Like, I haven't paid too much attention because there were a few minutes between these games. Like, I pause it for you guys. It's only a few seconds in between, but for me, it's been a few minutes. But yeah, this should be the same team. Um, Scarf and Hilligo, as we saw, Spikes Go Ninja, uh, Rocks SD, Stone Edge, Lando, probably Z move. I don't know, he didn't, uh, never used the Z move, so, no, never mind, never mind. It's just SD, Landris with, um, with Stone Edge. It doesn't have Z move, because we saw the Z move was on Kofak. Uh, Assault Vest Tangles and Standard Mega Mower, probably, with Play Rough. I assume it has T Punch, SD, and Sucker Punch. Some on Iron Head, so we will see if he has Iron Head over Play Rough or over SD. Over T punch. So let's just get into this game. This will be interesting for me because, like I said, I haven't watched this replay myself. As we see, um, Anti just lead off with Toxic Packs and Aim reveals the taunt on the Greninja, which is nice. So he predicts him to go for T spikes, or I don't really know if I agree with this play because, like, he can, like, FLCL can just scald here and fish for a burn. Like, I don't really see they think there's a point in going for T spikes when Aim has a. Nihiligo anyway, and like, I mean, there is a point, because you forced the Nihiligo in, but I don't think FLCL lost anything from, uh, from Scalding here, exactly. 
So he doesn't get the burn on the Greninja, which is nice for aim. Aim brings in the Tangro, so Evil is just gonna fish for burns, because the only attacking move that Toxic Banks runs is Scald, unless you're on the low ladder, or some people... I've seen some people run Sludge Bomb Toxic Banks, but I don't really like that set. I think you have to run Haze, Scald, Recover, and then either T-Spikes, or Toxic, or something like that. So I assume this is just a uh, free knockoff for Pokeaim. Unless he has HP fire, he can predict the scissor, but yeah, he just goes for knockoff. Most Tangros run HP eyes to check Zyger. Bandit Zyger and Subcore Zyger are both big threats thanks to Thousand Arrows. Which has everything, it doesn't have immunities, it only has resists. So I see I assume we're gonna see a U-turn here from FLCL just to grab momentum. So I like this play by aim going to Landris to get some helmet chip on the scissor. I don't know if the helmet got actually revealed last game, so it's defensive SD helmet. And SD, I assume this is to pressure stall, because I know Alpha Seal has used stall in um, some other Sun and Moon tournament. I think it was the Sun and Moon, the first tournament that came out, the first official tournament. Um, I think that one was won by I Love League. So I Love League is also still in, still in OST. I think he won his match. Uh, let me let me know in the comments who is your favorite to win OST. Let me. I will talk a bit after after this this, this match is over about who, who I think will win OST. So we see Tapu Bulu come out, and this is kind of scary for Aim because he doesn't have the best switches for this. Tangos checks it, but I assume he doesn't have HP eyes. So FLCL goes for SD, threatens this Tangos, but then he's like, "I'm scouting for Sludge Bomb here, so I'm going to my scissor. I'm not just risking my." I'm not just risking my type of bull or like this play by FLCL. Like, just as ding up and then you see how the opponent reacts to it. And he, so aim showed that Tangos was his check to tap a bull right. And then the thing is if aim at HP fire this turn it would have been super rough for FLCL. But yeah, we see aim doubled out I think into Landris. Um, yeah. So this is just um, a free roost for FLCL. Oh, okay, switched out. <laughs> so I assume Aim is just gonna get up rocks here. And FLCL is either gonna get up his own rocks or he's gonna defog or HPIs. As Aim gets in the Landris on the HPIs, really nice play. And he can go for spikes here. Um yeah, spikes is a really nice play. He can also predict the torso packs. Um if he has if he has Thunder Punch on his Mawal, he can double into Mawal. To pressure the packs, but he will still risk getting burned, so I'm not sure if that's the best play. Just getting up a spike is nice. If he had extra sensory in his Greninja, that would be amazing for aim, but I don't think he has it because he showed um he showed that he has taunt. Now we see ice beam. And I think in game one we saw that he had spikes and I don't remember the last move. So I assume Effort here is gonna go for score the T spikes here, obviously. Even though I would maybe go for recover here if I was FLCL scouting for extra sensory. But he just goes for skull, trying to get a burn in case one in case aim wants to go for torn again. And aim doubles out into Greninja predicting the scissor, which is a nice play. But um FLCL just stays in there, so this play didn't work out. Like he has HP fire on his ninja, he if the scissor came in there, he could have threatened it out with HP fire and the scissor would have taken rocks damage. It would have been amazing for him. But FLCL was willing to get up T spikes to let this get knocked off, which I don't know if I agree with that play. I mean, I kind of like this play works out. I kind of agree with this play because getting a T spike off means um, Aim has to bring in the Heligo before he can bring in Tangros if he doesn't want to get poisoned, or he has to bring in the Heligo before um, Kofagoris or Greninja, or they will get poisoned. So FLCL can play a certain way. To predict the, the turn, aim goes into Nihiligo and can grab momentum by that, so I guess it's a fine play. And this time aim just goes for a taunt, and I assume effort just goes for skull, yeah. Trying to burn the ninja, the ninja's getting worn down, this is not looking too good for aim here. The ninja cannot really break Poxapex, so he just goes Nihiligo to get off rid of the T-Spec, skull doesn't do much, thankfully no burn here. And I assume he just goes back into Tangrove here. He can still get burned potentially, obviously. I like that Skull got nerfed in this gen, but... I mean, not Skull, but the burn got nerfed, so just a little bit of chip damage. 
And I think Dame just goes for the knockoff here. I mean, that's what I would do if I was in his situation. Exactly. And now FLCL is forced to roost. I mean, he could have doubled out again. But just the way FLCL was playing, I understand Ames play. So I guess of the Intimidate with Landris. Would be interesting to see if this is the rap. HP fire Landris. But we, all, we already saw we already saw in game 1 that it was SD Stone Edge. And I think it was Rox too. So obviously Earthquake in the last slot. So I don't know what I'm talking about. So FLCL Defox there. But this is a nice play for AIM. Um, the opposing Landris is really obvious. So I think AIM can just go for Stone Edge here. As he just gets up rocks, that also works. And Aim has to switch on the HPIs here into Tangros, which is a fine play because Tangros doesn't care. Okay, FLCL just gets up rocks. I thought I, I thought he would have gone for HPIs there. U turns out, gets some chip into Scissor. He goes, and Tangros cannot touch the Scissor, so this is a fine play. And he can just um, he can either U turn again or he can double out. If he predicts the Landry, he can double out so he doesn't take any chip damage. Okay, he just goes for a roost, that also works. Now he can either go for bull punch or defog or U-turn. Goes for U-turn to grab momentum this way. Slow U-turn is always nice. Also he took some he took some helmet damage. And now FLCL is probably gonna go for HPIs. And M just goes back into Tangrove. The thing is he can always just go U-turn back into Scissor, so this is really like Moves like U-turn are so amazing because you cannot double switch versus them. Brings in the scissor and since this doesn't have HP fire, aim cannot really do anything. Like FLCL can just keep making this play and roost up. I guess he will eventually run out of roost. But aim's team is also getting whittled down thanks to the rocks. I mean Tangos has regenerator, but his Landris is getting whittled down is what I meant to say. As we can see, aim going for SD or double switch here or earthquake. Okay, just earthquake trying to whittle the scissor down so it's forced to roost. Yeah, he just keeps making this. This just keeps happening. But this time he doesn't go for HPS. This time he predicts the tank with. Goes for U turn and gets the switch advantage this way. Can go to scissor and click U turn again. So we probably see the landers or the Marwell come out. Yeah. Marwell would have been an option if it had Firefang, but Firefang is not really common. It's also not that good in this meta. I feel like I feel like T Punch is just superior because it hits uh, Toxapex, Cell Stealer, and you also hit Gamma, which you hit, which you also hit with um, Firefang. But yeah, Firefang is also only good if you're really weak to Scissor, maybe. But yeah, he has HP Fire on Greninja, he has SD on Lando to weaken Scissor, he has Z Move on Kofag. Ah, he could also have HP fire on the Hilligo, we don't know that yet. It might also be HP eyes. The FLCL just keeps getting momentum here, and this Landis is almost dead now. So we see the type of Bulu come back in, and I assume you just see uh, SD or Horn Leech. I mean, I don't see what he loses from Horn Leeching here. Because the Tangrowth is not even that healthy. It, come, it always has to take rocks, so it's at 56, and Horn Leech just, um, yeah, that's 21%. So if he has D there, he actually could have killed it with the fighting move or with superpower. Probably Z fighting move, I don't know if superpower would have killed. But yeah, he can always make the scissor play. Aim makes a nice double this time. Actually into Landris, so this doesn't help Aim at all. I felt here can just get a roost up. I thought he would maybe double out into something that pressures the scissor. But uh, SDing up here, I don't know what SDing up here does, because like FLC is just gonna roost the next turn he's just gonna bullet punch and kill the scissor. Unless the scissor um the Landris Kill the Landris, did I say so? Unless the Landris is able to live one was intimidated, but it's not. Maybe this was a roll, because it's Helmet Landris, so it might be really bulky and... The Scissor was at minus one, so maybe it was a roll. So Aim is kind of forced to HP fire, he doesn't have much for the Scissor. Um, spiking here is also a nice play, yeah, Spiking is a nice play here. I mean, yes, there was no way FLCL was stacking his Scissor. But this is such a big threat, so I thought they might have HP fire there. You have the spike is nice. Just to chip down. Like the spikes hits everything besides the Landers and FLCL's team and Landers is at 63 after rocks. So FLCL is kind of forced to defog. Um Amy's just gonna taunt here, okay. I thought I thought he would go in a tangrove. If this good ninja dies if it gets burned, it gets burned here, so. Not looking too good for aim, he's down 4-6, even though he has up some hazards, like the scissor can still defog on the tangles every time. If he so he's just gonna attempt, he's gonna attempt to sweep with his um, Cofagrius again, go for a nasty plot and then trick him in the next turn. 
I thought he doesn't get the score burn, so I think he yeah okay, so he just goes for the Z move. Doesn't go for the trick room, nice play. Because he outspeeds the Toxapex, so why would he go for Trick Room versus Toxapex? That would actually be a bad play. Yeah. Never ending nightmare just Oko's Toxapex. I think this is really like If you have you guys ever Oko the Toxapex, I think this feeling must be really satisfying. <laughs> the Toxapex just gets blown away. I thought the L was yeah, makes a nice play here going to Tabu Bulu and can click Horn Leech. Do a lot, brittle this down. The mummy actually doesn't do here much, doesn't do anything here because Tabu Bulu um, already got up the grassy terrain. Now, um, Aim got up the trick room, but yeah, he's not able to sweep. I'm pretty sure he will be in range from uh, Bullet Punch. Also, um, Tabu Bulu might be able to live a plus two Shadow Ball since he's at full. As we see, Aim has Pain Split in the last slot, so it's a nasty plot, Pain Split. Shadow Ball and Trick Room, so it doesn't have Volo Wisp. So pr Aim probably cocked this, and I guess Shadow Ball doesn't kill. Like, otherwise, I would have gone for Shadow Ball. But yeah, because FLCL just heals all, everything back, like the, the Grassy Terrain plus Horn Leech Recovery is just big. He's almost back to full. So yeah, there's no way Aim can win this unless he gets a crit here. Yeah, Shadow Ball does 90. Okay, so Aim did the Kalk. So he basically had to get that crit there to kill the Bulu. And yeah, I don't think Aim has a way of winning this now. Um, Nihiligo gets checked if it's if it's if it's Scarf Nihiligo, right? Gets checked by Scizor. If it locks into HP, I to hit the Zygarde. It gets walled by Heatran slash Scizor. If it locks into Sludge Wave to kill Bulu, it gets walled by Scizor, Heatran, Zygarde. So yeah, I don't really think Aim has a way of winning this as, like, he makes a double here, predicting what, predicting Heatran maybe, I don't know, now, now what did he predict here, Tangos doesn't beat Heatran, I'm not really sure what he predicted there, maybe the Zygarde, maybe the Zygarde and he doesn't have HP eyes on his, on his, uh, on a hill ago, but the yeah, FLCL, didn't have a reason to switch there, like, I feel like he just won at this point. Just goes for Horn Leech, gets some more chip on the tank. And he can go for Super Power here, off of Z, Z Outlet Pummeling. As HP Ice doesn't kill, as he goes for Z Outlet Pummeling. Blows this Tangrowth away. Actually, it loves on 1%. Okay, thought it killed. Tangrowth is actually bulky. Even with the salt with the fifth stuff is still really good. So aim goes in the go hoping he can live a hit, but superpower is nah, there's no way he lives that. Nihiligo is neutral to superpowers and the rock is weak to fighting and poison resists fighting. And Nihiligo has really bad defense kinda. Like it has decent speed and HP, but I think the defense was one of its weak stats. And aim has basically Aim's ba only win con is basically banking on a choke here, I think. So he has to go more while get multiple SDs and somehow pull it through, but I don't think there's a way he can pull through. I feel still just goes Harlando. Get off the Intimidate, but no, Aim is Hypercutter. Hypercutter is a really nice set on Marwise, so you can kill incoming Landrus with the combination from Playroff into Sucker Punch. I'm not really sure if it's 100% in your favor or if you need Starfrog up, but um, I've seen Landrus a drop. Because Mawa had Hyper Cover. So Melandra switched in, died to hyper Play Rough plus Sucker Punch. I don't remember if it was at 100%, but I think it was. I think Play Rough did like 66 or 64. So that was yesterday on the ladder that I saw that. And yeah, Aim just goes for SD here, I assume. And Amphitheal can um, just go for Earthquake. Um, this is Mawa's bulk here. Without an. Like the land was was at neutral, it was not. What. <laughs> Good God, why can I not talk? He doesn't have an Intimidate off on the Landers or anything, so... I know it's a defensive Landers, but Landers has really respectable attack. And that just shows that Mora has really nice defense. To be able... Like, Mora has bad HP, but it has really nice defense. He's able to live that Earthquake on a few percent, but like at this point he just dies to Helmet, so there's no way Aim can win. Even if he has DC, he can kill him here with a Sucker Punch, but... Effort still always plays a sucker punch here. Aim, Aim already said GG. He knows he dies to helmet. I don't know why he outplayed the sucker punch there, but it didn't really matter at this point. I guess the flex. Mobile dies to helmet, and there's no way Tangrowth can win. It doesn't have HP fire. Even if it had HP fire, it dies to U-turn at this point. It dies to Heatran at this point. So we will see a game three. 
as uh, I thought Seal brings the game brings it back um, wins the second game but it's disgusting <laughs> I don't want to say disgusting I've used this team myself um but yeah nonetheless Dr. Bex is disgusting it's a really like if your opponent is not prepared for this type of team it's really like deadly but I feel like most people know how to play versus this style. Like if you bring like a type of Lele, this team gets like pressured. But yeah, I will see you guys with game three. Let me pause it real quick. Alright guys, we are back with game three and AM decides to bring Psychic Spam, Mega Alakazam plus Tapu Lele and the defensive backbone of Tangros, Toxapex and Stealth Rocks on either Landers or Guardsharm and one of the two might be the Z-Move user. It could also be Z-Move Tapu Lele. Um, Shoutouts to Padlop though. Padlop says um, that a specific Z-Move Tapu Lele set doesn't exist. We will talk about that later. <laughs> I should actually make a funny edit where I, where I quote Padlop, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Um, I'm still learning how to do edits. I will try to do short on lives with edits uh, the upcoming days but yeah let me just talk about FOTL's team real quick um it's pretty much it's almost HO just slap the Rotom and the land on so yeah depending on the land reset you can call it HO even let's just get right into this game whoever wins this moves on to OS2 round 5 as I can see FOTL leading with Greninja or or maybe with the Rotom or um Furmosa, like Furmos is one of these mons, good god, I've tested multiple sets, Z fighting move is so good, so yeah, just leads with Greninja versus the Tapu Lele, I could see uh, FLCL scouting for a Scarf Tapu Lele here, but the thing is he doesn't have good switch-ins, because Mawal has really poor spadev, especially before it's mega evolved, the Moombas would just destroy anything if it's Scarf Lele, um, makes sense to be not Scarf Lele though, because like, looking at Aim's team, he needs some like breaking power, I feel like, but yeah, FLCL still switches into Gengar, scouting for Scarf Moonblast, as AIM just goes into Toxapex, revealing that he's not Scarf Lily, most likely, or scouting for a potential gunk shot from Scarf Ninja, even if he was Scarf Lily. So this is a really nice play from FLCL going for Trick, crippling the Toxapex, as he gets rid of the Scarf on his Gengar, gets the Black Sludge, so Gengar gets some recovery. And I assume we see his you see Scald here from the Toxapex? Yeah, exactly. And I think the Gengar, yeah, the Gengar is burned. Shadow Ball in here doesn't really do much, because, like, I think this is mixed defensive um, Toxapex. Eats it up completely. And FLC is kind of forced to switch. He can bring in his Rotomars Greninja, yeah. Since Toxapex is so weak, that barely did anything. Like, that did just a little bit more than left over seal. And we will see a Villowers slash Volt switch from FLCL here. So we see a Willowisp on the Tangros to get some chip on that. And we see a Volt switch. We will see a Volt switch into maybe Mega Mawile or maybe into Fermosa or Gengar. And so Landris, my bad, my bad. So he didn't make the play I was talking about. Really nice play by Aim here going for the HPIs. Um, and the guard still got it. <laughs> I really wouldn't, um, I mean, I really thought he would go into Formosa or Gengar, because those resist Giga Drain, like Formosa resists Giga Drain and Knockoff, so if it's if it's Z-Fighting or Z-Move Formosa in general, uh, Z-Fighting is the most common set, the Z-Poison jab is not really common, and I've never seen Z-Bug Buzz. So like Formosa could switch it into everything besides um, Hidden Power Fire really well. But yeah, AIM just got this read correct. Hidden Power Ice was a decent play because it would have hit the Faramosa for neutral. If it, it hits the Landris, obviously super effective. So yeah, godly play by AIM, I guess. I assume this is, yeah, this is FLCL's only Stealth Rocker. So we'll just probably see FLCL throw up the Roxy and AIM pick off the Landris with HP Ice. Tangos is still pretty healthy, especially because it has a regenerator. And we see FLCL is running Intimidate Maul, which is interesting. Because like... He doesn't have hyper counters, so Landris that uh, the Landris that Aim brings in here will get off the Intimidate on the Mawal, and if he goes for player of it will do a bit less. Otherwise it would just do 5 million. So yeah, that's 45, otherwise it would have done like mid 60s, high 60s. Um, yeah, we see Helmet Landris. Helmet Landris is just on every team. Like some people would say it's boring, but it's kinda needed to like keep the meta together. So 
so we'll see if Fafa Seal makes a bold play here. Like he, he could play off again, predicting predicting uh, aim just to go for rocks. But Mawa is just a, such a big threat. I assume aim will just go for earthquake. We will see what happens. Fafa Seal brings in the Firmosa, predicting the rock slash earthquake. He also could have gone to Rotom there, and then Volt switched out, predicting the Tangrooms. But I guess going for Firmosa is just Depending on his Feromosa set, this can uh, threaten aim because the Toxapex is already choice locked. So if he's Quiver Dance Feromosa, he can actually threaten this uh, Toxapex. But he yeah, just goes for the Rapid Spin, which makes sense on an offensive team like this. That it's uh, Feromosa is just. Um, it always gets the, the Rapid Spin off if you really need it. If it's a Scarf, or even if it's not Scarf, it's just so, so, so fa fast. Why can I not talk properly? So uh, he could be Z fighting with um, spin, or he could be Scarf. And I think Aim will just go for Scald here. We see FLCL is not he's not the Z fighting, and he's also not Scarf because he changes that moves. So he's either Expert Belt or maybe Black Belt or maybe Focus Sash. I have no idea. I'll, we didn't see Life Orb either. I would assume we would see um, the Rotom coming out here. But well, we see Greninja come out. So maybe Evelsteel has extra sensory on his Greninja. As Aim gets a burn there. And brings in a, a Solve as Tangros. Greninja is just one of those mons that doesn't really have regions. Tangros can check Ash Greninja decently well. Type of is like the best check to Ash Ninja, but yeah, Protein is just the mod that has no really good switch-ins besides Shanty, Porygon 2 and maybe Mola. I cannot really think of anything that switches into the Greninja set. Like, the Spadef Jirachi I've used switches into Greninja if it doesn't have Dark Pulse. But Hydro Pump will still do a good decent chunk. So I assume we see a Spike slash Extra Sensory slash Ice Beam come out here from FLCL. Yeah, he goes for extra sensory, so aim makes a really nice play there, scouting for that. And I assume he goes aim just goes back into um, either guard jump or toxapex. If he's scarf jump, he could bring that out on a gunk shot because he outspeeds the ninja next turn and can kill it, obviously. Or he can also like go to toxapex. Um, Greninja gets worn down by life up and burn, and he can eat up a gunk shot this way. Um, I could also see FLCL going for a spike, predicting aim to switch here on a gunk shot, predicted gunk shot. But yeah, we will see. He just goes for a spike. Nice play. And aim just goes for another skull, I assume. Because you don't want to lock yourself and do anything else other than skull. And yeah, you try to get a burn on the Rotom. Which he doesn't get. And we just see a Volt Switch or a will wisp here. will wisp okay. So aim keeps trying to burn the Rotom. Toxapex actually would have eaten up a Volt Switch. So I understand that aim just stayed in there. See, that did 32. That did nothing. And yeah, just skulled again. Obviously, he's locked in. His Greninja is almost dead, though, with... um. Chip damage from burn and scald. He only has like three or four life up hits. Like with the burn, he only has like two or three life up hits. Goes for extra sensory again in case aim wants to stay in there. And the Tangrowth gets two hit killed by extra sensory into ice beam. Yeah, exactly. As yeah, the Greninja only has one hit left, and aim can bring his Mega Alakazam. Pick off the. The Gengar here as FLCL decides to sack that off. So this is looking good for our boy aim. He's up 5 and 4. But yeah. I don't know, like most of you guys will probably know FLCL. I haven't talked too much at the beginning about him. Um like both players are really well known in the, the Smogon community. They have won multiple tournaments. I don't know which tournament uh, FLCL has won exactly, but I know that he's a really good player. Or like really experienced, let me say it that way. But in Sun and Moon, like Sun and Moon is still a new matter, so it's kind of hard for me to tell who's like the best. But I will still give my opinion at the end who I, who will win or who's the best Sun and Moon, in my opinion. So we see Alakazam go back into Landrus there, not wanting to die to a Buck Boss. But if FLCL goes for Cobra Dance here, it would be really scary. Now, what am I talking about? What am I talking about? FLCL already shot his Rapid Spin and U-Turn, so yeah. I think we just see um, a bug move out, come out here. Oh, you just get yeah, a U-turn, exactly. As a nice play by M getting some helmet on the Fermosa. This way he gets up rocks. Because the Rotom is slower and... Because Greninja would have died to... Greninja would have died to rocks. Morwa gets out to bad, but Landris... So going Landris on a U-turn there, predicting the U-turn. 
was a nice play by AIM ensuring that he gets off rocks and the Rotom misses a Hydro Pump there which I don't think it matters too too much because uh, like AIM just gets off a little chip damage that the left over C like yeah, that miss didn't matter. So now we see Tapu Lele come out and I assume we will see a Psychic slash Psychic Psyshock as FLCL sacks off the Greninja to rocks. And he Faramosa comes out and user only does 48% so I assume this is a plus speed Faramosa because it didn't do that much damage even though I haven't calked this this is just what I'm how I feel like a head calc from me and I assume we will see a psychic move here Mawa is gonna get to it killed but it's obviously oh it doesn't get to it killed actually because it has really good Mawa has really good um physical bulk but yeah, FLCL switches out, he's scouting for... I don't know what he's scouting for. Maybe for Z-move? Let me actually think about this. I'm not really sure what FLCL predicted here, because like... I think AIM pretty much has this game, because... Like, Marvel would have di like, probably died to... Whatever special move that AIM has, either Focus Blast, it might love a Moon Blast, but if AIM has Psychic of um, Focus Blast, Maul would die to that. And if he has a Z-move, which is super likely, because unless the Z-move is on Guard Jump, we haven't seen the Guard Jump set yet. But Scarf Jump just makes a lot of sense looking at AIM's team, because Volker Runa is really scary besides... Actually, he has a Toxic Pack, so check that. But that is also a big threat. So I understand that the Scarf Jump is, this jump is probably Scarf. So we see the, I think we see the Z-move come out here. And it's actually Gigavolt Havoc, which is a really interesting set. The Rotom takes 65, gets blown away. So this is, um, I think it's Thunder Tapu Lele. Thunder Gigavolt Havoc. Um, it's to lure in Celesteela. I haven't cocked, but I assume it is like 70-ish to Celesteela. Maybe even more. If it's Modest Lele, probably even more. Or just in general, maybe 75-ish. Depending on the set of dealer, obviously. Um, so yeah, shout out to Padlock who says Z Gigavolt Havoc Lele is not a set. I know, I'm, I'm just trolling, I'm just messing with you guys, my dude. I know this set is not common at all, but I still feel like this set has some potential because Set of dealer is um, overall, besides Spadef Jirachi, one of the best checks or switch. I don't want to say counters to Table Lele because si Specs Psyshock blows you away and uh, even if you're a subtle stealer but yeah this set is also really cool to learn subtle stealer the Rotom is obviously gonna get to it go out here by um anything like gigavolt havoc into psychic into psy shock to moon blast no matter what and yeah so basically effort seal cannot win this game at this point you cannot suck a punch since psychic terrain is up and Mawa is in range to die from Psyshock. As he see he shows the taunt there. Going for taunt there by Pokey Aim, I can understand this play. Maybe maybe he maybe Psyshock was a roll and if if Aim got a min roll, Mawa could have lived, gone for SD and Sucker Punch would have been really threatening for Aim, but I'm not really hundred percent sure. So yeah, we see um tabulated drop. To the player of, and I assume this is a scarf jump, and we'll just see um, aim click off quick twice and win this game. Sucker Punch just 46. Even though Sucker Punch got nerfed, Mobile is so strong. I've actually um, I see it up with my Mobile, and have like I've actually seen it up twice with my Mobile yesterday, and the attack was like so high. I forgot the number. I think it's like 1,300 if you SD up once or 1,350. I don't remember. But yeah, if you SD up twice, I think it's like 2,000 or something. Maybe a bit less. But yeah, like, look at this. It's a 70 base power move, not there, but it's 64.2. That's crazy. I know it's an offensive jump, but still. So yeah, Formosa, um... Cannot win this game. Oh yeah, um, Blunder says he in the chat that's taunting by him was a good play i think i don't know if he's, if that was what, he, is what he's talking about but taunting by taunting from aim was actually a really good play now that i think about it because this way he, his tapu lele dies and flcl cannot kill the tapu lele with the faramosa so if he killed the tapu lele with the faramosa he would have gotten a speed boost and then he would have outsped the scarf jump 
and he outspeeds Alakazam obviously and a Toxapex probably still would have checked the Feromosa anyway. Like probably Toxapex beats the Feromosa anyway, but I still like how I played this. And now he just he can even switch out because I don't know if Earthquake kills, but Feromosa has like no defense. I assume Earthquake just kills. I assume Aim will just cock this and go for Earthquake, yeah. Just pick off the Feromosa. But yeah, if 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 Earthquake didn't kill there. Like there's no way uh if CL had Quiver Dance because he showed Rapid Spin and U turn on his Feromosa. You have to have high jump kick and ice beam, I feel like, in our last two slots. So, yeah. Like, you would have to run, like, a lot of HP, I think, on Feromosa to lift that earthquake, and that's not really a sad. Like, Feromosa is never. Like, some Feromosa run some HP to lift certain weak, at weak moves, but I don't really feel like it's worth it most of the situations. So, Pokemon wins this match. Uh, I like the series, so I decided to record this for you guys. I hope you all enjoyed. Okay, and moves on to round 5 of OST. Which will, I think, at the moment, OST, you always have like one week to play the round. So I think this round ends on Sunday, which is um, the 26th of March. Like, it ends at like midnight, so at the beginning of the 27th at EST time. So, and I think there's like 64 people left at the moment in this tournament. I'm not sure if it's 64, but uh, I think it's going to be so. Next round is going to be 32 then, if I'm correct. And so, there are going to be only the really good players left. Even though, like, some of the good players already are out. And, like, some lost to Hex. Like, no matter what some of the good players lost to. Like, it's obvious, right? It's Pokemon. Hex happens. Not everyone can move on. What I'm trying to say here is... Like, maybe some people just went super far in OST because they maybe they got lucky or maybe they got some sort of hacks in their favor maybe they got um maybe they got lucky by getting opponents that are not active so they got an activity win but yeah no nonetheless the top 32 there's gonna be really good interesting matches really top players in there i think abr is still in ost i don't know if you won this this round but speaking of round um, actually, I think this was round 5 already. Uh, I will have to check the thread um, real quick for you guys so that I don't give you wrong information. I will obviously put the right title in the, the right round in the title. So yeah, let me actually check that real quick so that I don't say anything wrong. So yeah, this was round 5, so that was my bad. So AIM moved on to round 6 already, my bad guys. We can, I can show you who is still in this tournament. I can give my opinion who will... Who's a favorite to win this? So PDC is playing, he's still in this. He's playing with the Sun, I don't know this user. Poig, so my favorites to win this. Uh, and Poig is one that's really good at the moment. Poig is, um, so I'm gonna like tell you three or four people who can win this in my opinion. I actually have to give you five people. Maybe that's a bit too much. I will give you five or six people who can win this tournament and then I will pick two of them who will have higher chances in my opinion to win it. So Poig, top five. Poig to win this aim obviously because like he already moved on um he like who else who else, who else? updated candle is a good player who else is top five ricardo has been doing really well even though he didn't care too too much but i'm still gonna put in because he beat nintendi he's doing really really well but he still has to play this round versus uh, i don't know seven on my bay uh, ngmp has to be top five of for sure really good player uh, ben Gay is also good, but uh, I feel like he's been bringing some super wild teams, so I'm not sure if I'm going to pick him for top 5. And yeah, obviously ABR, where's ABR? I'm going to pick ABR too. Yeah, here yeah, ABR is also one of my favorites. And then, did I forget anything? Yeah, so I know th these two guys, I know Easy and I know Sorry, they're playing each other. So I hope whoever of them wins gets super far in this, obviously. But I feel like NJNP, AIM or Blunder. Oh, I forgot to mention Blunder. Blunder also has good chances to win this. Where's Blunder in this thing? Let me actually... Blunder is playing versus... Okay, versus this guy. I have no idea who this guy is. So I feel like NJNP has really good chances. He was in finals last year. I think he won, but he, there was something going on why he didn't get the trophy. I don't know the background story about that. Um, yeah, BKC is also... He's really good, at, especially at older gens. He's also good at Sun Moon, so I don't want to... I can't just leave him out completely, but I don't think he's the top favorite. 
Prop ferret for me is NJMP and I don't know who would I put at top top NJMP and Poek are one of the top favorites for me to win this and I mean there are also some other good players that I don't know about. Oh Vortex is also nice. I didn't even know he was still in Vortex is also good. But yeah, top two I will have to be NJNP, um Poek and then Pokey Aim in my opinion. Like I would put them kinda on the same level maybe. Like they have different playstyles a bit, but and also Blunder, yeah, also would, I would put Blunder at like points number three or like almost at the same level, it's kind of hard to, like I don't want to put any <laughs> anyone above the other one. And yeah, obviously maybe I can also win this. So yeah, you guys can give me my opinion about this, what do you think will win this? Um, maybe some of you guys are still in OST and you, if you want me to record your game live, hit me up when you play, because like, and SP is pretty easy for me to record the games because there's like a schedule with the time so I know when the games happen. But for OST, some people just, yeah, here we see M post that 1GG's friend. Uh, yeah, I don't know what FSC I was talking about here. I had a stroke game one. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> yeah, like as you guys see, there's people, like people post here that they won or they contacted their opponent or some people are calling for activity but no one really says when they will play most of the time so if you want me to record your game live if you're still in OST just let me know when you play oh yeah Analytic is also still in Analytic is also a good player he also has chances to go far in this for sure oh and I forgot Isle of League my bad I forgot Isle of League Isle of League is pretty good um, he beat Gotham Paladin I think he's in yeah, he moved on to round 6 already. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. This tournament is hosted by tier 6, by the way. I will see you with, um, I gotta record like a shot on live later on, but I don't know when the shot on live will go up since I'm planning to make edits and I'm bad at making edits, so it will take forever for me. Um, so maybe the shot on live will go up one or two days after this. But stay tuned for that, stay tuned for SPLCon, probably, hopefully my internet doesn't die a weekend. Saturday is Sunday, there should be a lot of SPL coming, playoffs, semifinals. And yeah, thank you for watching and I'm signing out, Dockridge, peace.